access to real people. The number that we have come up working with our nursing home industry is that if this legislation is passed, each bed is impacted by a loss of $663. I will sum up my comments by reading something that was sent to me by someone who works in the nursing home industry. Here is what this person says. For the first time in my career, I am honestly questioning how much longer I can continue. To constantly be up against regulations and funding when all you want to do is make a difference in someone's life is exhausting." Unquote. Mr. President, this is a high-risk venture. This shouldn't be about taking our best shot. This is, should be about getting this regis legislation right. Thank you. Senator from Connecticut. Mr. President, let me, if I can, again, uh, address a couple of points. First of all, I, I made this point yesterday, but it deserves being repeated, apparently, because the suggestion somehow that this bill doesn't provide any benefits to anyone until the year, the year 2014 uh, is, is just untrue. I mean, there are, I, I could spend the next 40 minutes describing the various things that our bill does immediately. Uh, on the enactment of this legislation, there are tax breaks immediately for small business to be able to reduce the cost of health care in a market where small business pays on average 18 percent more for health care premiums than other businesses do. As pointed out by the CBO, under our bill, you're actually seeing premium cost reduction uh, in the small business market, as well as the individual market and the large group market. Uh, our legislation provides immediately uh, closing a good part of that donut hole, which is an immediate benefit in the cost of prescription drugs for the elderly. That doesn't happen four or five years from now. That happens immediately. We stop immediately, friends are provide immediately, the idea of screening and prevention services uh, for Americans. As I mentioned earlier, that is not only the humane thing to do, it's also a great cost saver. If you can identify and detect an early problem and deal with it, the cost savings are monumental. And we all know that. Under our health care plans, as we have as United States Senators, where we get 23 different options every year to choose from, we have that benefit. I'm a beneficiary of that benefit having identified a health care problem early through screening. That was not only beneficial to me personally because I'm going to be alive for a longer period of time than otherwise, but it saved thousands of dollars in long-term medical costs if I had not identified the problem. Those are simple things that are included in our bill that happen immediately. You can't be dropped by your health care carrier uh, as you are today. You can be dropped for no cause, uh, for no reason whatsoever. That is stopped immediately on the adoption of this legislation. So when I heard my good friend from Arizona say there are no benefits in this bill until three or four or five years, uh, that is just not true. And again, a simple reading of the legislation would identify any number, a long list I have here, of benefits that happen immediately. Now, the, the issue that Senator Baucus has raised over and over again is the issue of guaranteed benefits under Medicare, guaranteed benefits. Let me challenge my colleagues to identify a single guaranteed benefit under Medicare that is cut by the bill before us. There is not a single benefit under the guaranteed programs that is in any way disadvantaged or reduced as a result of this legislation. What is cut are private health care plans under the Medicare Advantage program. And this program, the reason why are we doing this? Medicare Advantage over payments cost every senior more money. A typical couple, elderly couple, pays $90 more per year in Part B premiums to pay for the Medicare Advantage payments over payments, even if they're not enrolled in these plans. That's $90 for every, on average, for every couple. And you get none of the benefits from it. Uh, fully 78% of beneficiaries are forced to pay higher premiums for non-Medicare extra benefits they will never see. Now again, I understand that somebody would like to have these additional benefits. I understand that. They're not guaranteed Medicare benefits. These are benefits that are provided for under Medicare Advantage. But 78% of our elderly are paying higher premiums so that a smaller percentage of people can get those benefits. Why should 78% of the elderly in this country pay a higher premium for a smaller percentage of people under private health care plans? What Senator Baucus and the Finance Committee have tried to do is to reduce those costs. Those are not guaranteed Medicare benefits. There's no guaranteed Medicare benefit that is cut under this bill. And I defy any member of this body to find one guaranteed benefit that's reduced under this plan.
I'd be happy to yield to my friend from I would, I would ask the distinguished uh, gentleman from Connecticut that we empower the Independent Medicare Advisory Board to come up with $23.4 billion worth of cuts in Medicare. Uh, can the gentleman from Connecticut assure me that the Independent Medicare Advisory Board would not find a benefit that they would suggest cutting? Absolutely. That's not allowed under this. You cannot cut guaranteed benefits. Now, going back and looking at the providers, as Would the gentleman out. yield for an additional question? Is this board empowered to find $23.4 billion worth not of cuts? Not guaranteed. Not under guaranteed benefits. And that's very clear. The gentleman, very show me point. that in the language. The board, let me point out, the board is prohibited, forbidden, from proposing changes to take benefits away from seniors or increase their costs. The proposals cannot ration care, raise taxes, or Part B premiums, or change Medicare benefits, eligibility, or cost-sharing standards. Couldn't be more clear. Couldn't be more clear. They are absolutely prohibited from doing that. And that's the point we've been trying to make here. Going after providers, frankly, as we know, we have a, <laughs> there are hosp hospitals will tell you themselves, in many cases, as a provider, there are cost savings there. I'm told, and again, my colleagues who know more about these details than I do, I'm told that, that, that it's not uncommon for an elderly person to leave a hospital and on average be given four prescription drugs uh, in order for them to take. I'm told as well within a month or so that average couple is not following their prescriptions very well. Either they live alone or they're not for one reason or another and they end up back being readmitted. There's a very high readmission rate in hospitals, thus raising the cost for hospitalization. Our bill makes significant efforts to try and reduce that problem of getting readmissions to hospitals, which again raise costs tremendously. That's where the savings are coming from here, by taking steps to try and reduce the readmission rate as a provider in the hospitals. That's a cost savings. That's not a denying a benefit to the elderly. It's trying to save money, save their lives. And so that's what we're trying to achieve here. But again, I challenge, I challenge any member to come up and identify a single guaranteed benefit under Medicare that is cut in this bill. There are none. And 78% of our elderly should not be required to pay additional premiums to take care of a handful of other people out there who I understand why they want some of these benefits, and they shouldn't be denied if they want to pay for them. But don't charge the other Medicare beneficiary for the, fee, for the benefit they never get. I'll be happy to yield to my colleague. It's interesting to me that under the McCain the Amendment, the first item, the first line on the McCain Amendment, on the motion to commit, relates to Medicare Advantage. Mm -hmm. I used to work for an old fellow in Illinois politics named Cecil Partee, and Cecil Partee said for every issue in politics there's a good reason and a real reason. We hear a lot of good reasons on the floor for this McCain amendment and the, and the future of Medicare. The real reason's on the first line of Senator McCain's motion to commit. And he says send this back to committee and don't touch Medicare Advantage. And I want to ask the senator from Connecticut about Medicare Advantage because some of the things that I've read around the country about Medicare Advantage tell me that this plan run by private health insurance companies cost more than basic Medicare. These companies promised us that when they got involved, they'd show us how to run a health insurance plan. They'd show us how to provide Medicare benefits and they would save us money. Some have, but by and large, if I'm not mistaken, isn't the jury in, the verdict's in? 14% increase in cost for Medicare benefits under this Medicare Advantage? It's 14%. Some states, even it's just 50% more. And when we talk about saving over $100 billion in the Medicare program over the next 10 years, part of it is by saying to those private health insurance companies who are overcharging Medicare recipients, the party's over, the subsidy's over. We're going to make sure that every American who qualifies for Medicare gets the basic benefits, but we will not allow these private health insurance companies to get a subsidy from the federal government at the expense of Medicare and its recipients. And then charging the other 78% of Medicare to raise their premiums. <laughs> I mean, that's so, the outrage of all of So this. the motive behind the McCain Amendment is less about saving Medicare and more about saving a private health insurance program called Medicare Advantage. And, and, uh, you're talking about misbranding, calling something Medicare Advantage.